I'm feeling lucky. Hey babe, I think you've got a fish on. That's a big one, eh? Hey. Evolutionary masterpiece. These talks, circling my head top. Hot in the tropic day. <laughs> We're definitely going in overnight. Hey guys, here we are, anchored off an isolated island in Australia's remote north. Last week we pulled over here in the night after a long and slow 40 hour near windless passage from the Wessel Islands. With a lack of diesel, we made the call to rest here and wait for breeze. We've also received some very rare rays of reception from a nearby cell tower, which means we can join live lectures and download a weather report before we get ourselves back on the road. For those of you that are new here, we are two uni students trying to sail the lap of Australia while completing our degrees. That was the worst exam I've ever done. And as it currently stands, we are floating in a very secluded part of the country, which was why we got excited for that small bit of internet. Juggling uni while sailing in areas without coverage means that there is little rest, as we're in a bit of a hurry to get to Darwin for our end of semester finals. It's the next big town or small city, which is still about 200 nautical miles away. There's not much wind, but it's the only day of wind this week. Otherwise, it's literally just a dead zone out here. So we're gonna, we're gonna make, make the miles when we can. As we said, we are getting tight on diesel. As you can see out here in the cockpit, I'm surrounded by jerry cans. All the yellow ones, unfortunately, are empty, but we've got like 15 litres of unleaded left, which is donkey's ears for us. So it puts us out here, trying to catch any wind we can. We're trying to get to Croker Island this morning, which is about 60 miles away. We left at around five o'clock. At five knots, it's only about a 12 hour sail, but we can almost guarantee we're not gonna be sitting on five knots. We're at the moment sitting on four knots, which is actually not too bad. Anyway, let's see how we go. Hopefully a bit more wind kicks in as this sun comes up. Also, I just fully noticed that you can see where I spilt red wine last night. Oh no. <laughs> If you're wondering why the pole is set up like this, it's because we were goose winged this morning. However, the wind shifted. We haven't put it away yet because we felt the wind would just change again. That was a good call because it swung back on our starboard side. So instead we've used it for the spinnaker. We might not be incredibly active on the camera. We're exhausted. It's been a, like a long week of sailing every day, but sailing really slow. <laughs> but instead of just doing like a big three, four day push, it's gonna be getting close to two weeks. This stretch of coast we thought would take less than a week. But you know what's really good? Even better than a coffee for getting some adrenaline pumping through the veins. Hey babe, I think you've got a fish on. That's a big one, eh? I think you've got a fish on. <laughs> yep, it's a fish on the line and a potential to restock our dwindling rations. Oh. Every time I try and pull him in, he fights back real hard. Like right now. It's not the most ideal situation to catch a fish with a spinnaker up. Normally, I would furl in the head sail to reduce our speed. We've got a fish on, so it's dropping the head sail back. But it's not as easy as that with small, our biggest sail flying. Let him have a little bit more. <sighs> He's got a lot of fight in him. Uh, we've, I already, it's something great. we've had one come off today. I don't want to have a second one come off today. He's not liking coming up to the surface. I'm gonna put a bit more drag on him. Slow him down. Hopefully, oh. oh. 
always rush off. Oh, that's what I'm like, I gotta get him in before a bigger beast gets it. Every time I try and get it any closer. Yes, babe, that's working. Is it getting any closer though? Yeah, he's gotta be his getting all wide on. Jeez. Yeah, I'm losing everything I just won. Oh, there he is. Eventually, we got him in. So that was fairly traumatizing. But we have successfully retrieved one tuna. Unsure of what tuna it is just yet. Maybe it's a northern bluefin. Who knows? But it's a good eating one and we're stoked. It's just bleeding over the side. And we'll clean up this mess. Yep, this is how I usually look when we pull in a fish and deem it worthy of eating. The killing process is something I really don't enjoy. However, this one hit me especially hard as I'm hypersensitive from tiredness, as well as just how long it took us to get it in. Poor fish. Of course, the second we land the fish, we're back to doing like four and a half knots or whatever. But of course, we were just sitting on six knots for the first time in and all week. How fast are we going? Six knots. Yeah. And that fish was on and I just could not get any line in. Even when I was pulling up it was just peeling out like with a six knots plus a tuna going. That was hard. Where's the oh the fish is bleeding. I was like wait where the f is the fish? We knew we were keen on tuna today. Nice, babe. Yeah, he's a biggie. He's uh, definitely our best tuna we've ever got. Perfect slim and soap size. These slicks entirely into itself there. It's insane. I mean, the design on these things. Look at the design. Look at that little line there, and it's been just like if you can imagine that folding in there and that in there. That's what he looks like when he smashes a little. Then he gets on, and he freaks out, and goes. <laughs> Evolutionary masterpiece. This little bad boy right here, and culinary masterpiece as well. A good fish never goes underappreciated aboard Nakama, especially when we're running really low on fresh food. At the moment we only have a carrot left. The wind has also decided to set in for the day, which with the spinnaker has us now hooning along. It is good to finally be moving again. Finally back to sailing, not floating. It feels good. The water's like this electric blue at the moment. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's As we're heading to the north side of Croker Island, we are shortly going to be changing our course as we clear Grant Island. This change will bring the boat from having the wind almost square behind us to a broad reach. This is where the spinnaker chaos begins. But at the same time, or? Normally we would ease the sheets to pull the sock down over the sail. This is what Slim's done here. And I'm up forward trying to get the sock over the spinnaker. The sock is this thing here. One line pulls it up, revealing the spinnaker, and the other down to contain it. However, our sock doesn't operate so smoothly, especially now with the spinnaker full of wind. Unable to get the sock over it, we've lost complete control over the spinnaker. It's taken off on us. Any tactics have now gone out the window, but fortunately somehow, just at the right time, Slim could grab it. You got it? And I quickly ran to release the halyard for it to fall onto the deck. are definitely not our strong suit but there's something we're trying to get more confident in using 
This light wind has been good in the sense that it's forced us to get it out of the locker and let it see the light of day. And although spinnakers look good and are great for light wind, you can't let your guard down. As I'm sure most of you would know, they can end in disaster. Luckily this time we got off scot-free. Spinnaker is in and messily scrunched into a bag. Headsail is back out. We had got down to about four and a half to four knots when we were doing what is the spinnaker debacle. Back up to about five and a half now. It's a nice breath of fresh air once the chaos sort of subsides and you can get back to enjoying yourself. It's hot in the tropics, eh? <laughs> Bit of birthday suit engine work. Anchorage now, only about three miles, and we're coming alongside some very red cliffs that look very Northern Territory. Very Northern Territory. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing to report. Just cruising in. I got hamburger eyes. Simon's got hamburger eyes. Hey babe, what are hamburger eyes? When you're really tired and your eyes go all puffy in the eyelids, so then it looks like your eyeball sitting in a little hamburger bun. Simon's got hamburger eyes. The sun is slowly Heading towards eyes. the horizon and also at that point, yeah, it's at yeah. that point where it's like ah! in your face, you know? <laughs> so it's gonna make me sushi for dinner. I'm very keen now to chop up that fre fresh fish that we just caught and make some sashimi and some maybe some sushi. <laughs> How are we looking? Good. Coming in, coming Come, in hot. Coming in hot, eh? We're doing seven knots. I think we'll get ahead of you in a sec. We'll get ahead of you in a sec. to do when we catch a fish is to make sushi and I'm actually nailing the art beginning to our good friend Fumi has taught us a lot of tips and tricks it does help when you've got a fridge full of fresh veggies and at the moment we only have a carrot left <laughs> so it's tuna and carrot sushi it would have been nice if it was like tuna and avocado or something like that but we don't have anything like that so you know you've got to make do so while soaps making sushi I'm on distracting chili duties because sushi is all the things chili likes. Her two favorite snacks is fresh fish. She's a fancy <laughs> She loves tuna and like you can't keep her away when you're chopping it. And then the other thing is she loves the seaweed. <laughs> Look at that. That's the face. Look of, at that tuna seaweed loving face. That's, that's the face of a villain there. She is eager. She's like, let me. <laughs> Look, she's, let me have the sushi. 
It was nice to enjoy sushi and an early night, but there is no time for rest. So we've just pulled up anchor at the little anchorage we stopped at last night. We're on a bit of a mission. We need to get to Darwin. We've got exams and assignments looming just around the corner and we're kind of stressed and freaking out about those. And we need to just be somewhere where we can just switch off from everything and do those things that we need to do. I don't know where we're gonna get to tonight. Sort of, we just needed to get going in the direction towards Darwin. We'll see what happens. Anyway, we're sailing and I'm gonna make some breakfast. There's been a few times we've thought it would almost just be easier to chuck a ride and go to Indonesia. It's only about 60 nautical miles further away than Darwin at this point. And there's something to be said about sailing in a straight line, offshore where you don't have to navigate coastline and strong tidal flows. One of the main reasons we're bobbing out here, saving our diesel, is for the next navigational challenge we have coming up on entry into Darwin, which you'll see more of in next week's video. But for now, we are going to be bobbing out here. I made little nigiri. Refining our sushi skills while we wait for wind. Hopefully doesn't break. Ah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how you meant to sail. <laughs> this is why you use a preventer kit. Oh, driving's never been so easy. <laughs> It's like one way to make a drogue, eh? Oh. Probably didn't get this much water in the look at We have a little bit of breeze coming in now, which is super nice to feel. We're definitely going in overnight. We should be at the beginning of Dundas Strait at around 1 a.m. Well, that's the plan to catch the tide in and down into Darwin. Been a nice, beautiful afternoon, actually. Light winds, but it's always beautiful out here when it's light winds. A little frustrating, but beautiful. So you can probably tell that we are getting very low on fresh food and we're grateful that we got that fish yesterday because yeah, we're having <laughs> We had tuna and rice for lunch, and now we're having tuna and rice for dinner, but in a different form. It'll be good. Yeah. Very keen for some fresh food, though. Avocado. Ooh. So keen for it. <laughs> Another night at sea, we're getting pretty used to these. Sun is setting, it's glorious. Eating dinner, that's also nice. And the wind has set in now. It's at 10 knots on our beam, which is also nice. Uh, let's hope it stays at this nice, pleasant 10 knots. We're cruising along really nicely. Actually, well, six knots, pretty good. And yeah, hopefully everything goes smoothly tonight. I think this is like our sixth or seventh night since we've left the Taurus. We've been getting a few night sails in. One way to make miles up. Well guys, that was all for this week. A huge thank you for tuning in and to our patrons for making each and every one of these videos possible. If you haven't already, subscribing really helps these videos be seen by more people. 
Next week, we close in on Darwin with only a minor hiccup. We'll explain later. We'll see you then.